The opening of the new migrant shelter at Floyd Bennett Field in Brooklyn did not go as smoothly as some officials had hoped. Several migrant families that were bused to the facility refused to stay there. They got right back on the bus. All right, guys, we got to talk about New York City, Eric Adams and the uppity illegal immigrants. Last time we talked about the uppity illegal immigrants in New York City, they were refusing Eric Adams migrant shelters. Yes, I mean, Eric Adams set up shelters with 20 million dollar plus of taxpayer money to house them to feed them to give them air conditioning okay to transport them wherever they want to go and the illegals showed up to the facility and they turned around and decided they're not going to stay there right they're too uppity they're too good to stay in the migrant uh, centers set up by taxpayer dollars. Confusion and frustration at New York's newest emergency migrant shelter after a group of migrant families refused to stay in the makeshift tent city that's set up to house 500 families. The latest effort to alleviate the ongoing migrant crisis in New York City. It's not a place where you put women and children. Over the weekend, as one of the city buses dropped off families, NBC New York capturing the moment some turned around refusing to stay. This family saying the Brooklyn shelter is just too far from their children's school miles away. These individuals who decided to leave, people criticizing them for not wanting to stay there. What, what, what do you think about that? Yeah, I'm not surprised that people took one look at the setup and decided that it would not work for their family. A spokesperson for Mayor Eric Adams saying in a statement, quote, we have used every possible corner of New York City and are quite simply out of good options to shelter migrants. Yeah, so you've seen that, you heard that, okay? The uppity illegals have decided that, no, 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 we're too good to stay in these migrant camps, right? This is what happens when you put the uppity illegals in hotels, right? They think that they're, they, uh, you know, they're high rollers, okay? They think that they're too good to just, you know, sleep in a place with the basics. No, no, no. They need room service, right? They need fine dining, okay? They need to have the best facilities possible. Again, facilities that uh, New York didn't even offer to actual Americans, right? Didn't offer to homeless vets, okay, or anybody on the street. Didn't offer these nice, fancy hotel rooms to them, but they offer them to the illegals. So now, again, the illegals who got used to ha living in these hotel rooms are like, no, no, you're not going to take us out of hotels and put us into these migrant facility camps, right? These concentration camps, right? Which is what the illegals have described the camps as in Chicago, right? I mean, they, they basically compared Brandon Johnson to Hitler. And a lot of those illegals are deporting themselves, right? They're heading back. Uh, to Venezuela because they'd rather live in Venezuela than Chicago, which again is amazing. It says a whole lot about the state of Chicago. But with that being said, the state of New York is about to get much worse. In fact, it's going to get a whole lot worse. Okay, it's going to end up being like Venezuela because Mayor Ed Eric Adams has announced severe budget cuts to the New York City budget in response to the illegal immigration crisis and the fact that the Biden administration does not want to give him any money. And I want to talk about it. But before we get into it, we have to have a word from the sponsor of this video, Fighter Flare by Preppers Pete. As a lot of you guys already know, violent crime across the United States has skyrocketed. Just recently, a politician was carjacked by three armed attackers just outside his home in Washington, D.C. This comes several months after another politician was assaulted in the elevator of her building. Between mass shootings, homicides, kidnapping, burglaries, carjackings, and more, it's never been more vital to learn how to protect yourself. This is why myself and tens of thousands are choosing the fighter flare flashlight. The fighter flare has odd people with this wonderful design and massive light output. On top of an ultra bright 800 lumen light, it boasts powerful strobe lighting modes for self-defense, a glass breaking hammer, a built-in power bank, solar powered recharging, rope and wire cutter, siren, high and low LED lighting modes, and much more. Countless five-star reviews back up the notion that this flashlight is the latest and greatest in the EDC market. This holiday season, give the gift of protection to your loved ones. Simply place your order now and get 25% off plus access to the exclusive Preppers Peak newsletter. Free express shipping 
And last but certainly not least, a 100% lifetime guaranteed replacement. Get the gift of protection this holiday season before they run out at fighterflare.com and use promo code Black Friday. That's fighterflare.com and use promo code Black Friday. Today, we are delivering our November financial plan update with a balanced budget, just like you and your families must do when you sit down at your kitchen table and pay your bills every month. But while we succeeded, make no mistake, we are not out of the woods. We added billions of dollars to care for the migrants. COVID funding is sunsetting, and we must close a $7 billion budget gap in the coming fiscal year. That is the reality we are facing. And if circumstances don't change dramatically, city agencies will be forced to reduce city funding spending by 5% two more times within the next six months. That would mean disruptions to the services we all rely on. We cannot afford to be divided as a city in this moment. We must come together and speak with one voice to Albany and Washington, D.C. to get the support we need. Now to the budget cuts announced today by Mayor Adams. He says 5% cuts across all agencies are necessary, and that includes sanitation, education, and public safety. Once the cuts are implemented, the NYPD will have the fewest officers it has had since the 90s. CBS 2's Ali Bauman explains what these cuts mean for you. Where are you going? You're supposed to be going that way home. Lizette Orsini knows everyone at the Astoria houses. She's lived here for three decades. But since last year, her neighborhood has seen a rise in almost every major crime. And quality of life, she says, is suffering. Like in the buildings. We sometimes can't even go inside the buildings because there's people there just sleeping there. So it's like kind of hot in every way. Orsini worries what will come from the budget cuts that City Hall announced Thursday. Every agency is going to be impacted. A five and a half million dollar slash to the sanitation department means fewer litter baskets and cuts for cleanups of sidewalks and greenways. The public library will have to close certain branches on Sundays as of December. And as for schools, the education department says $120 million will be eliminated from pre K and 3K programs, along with rollbacks to summer school. If they cut up all these programs, what are the kids going to be in the streets? That's where they're going to be. The NYPD will feel it too. The cuts may eliminate the next five classes in the police academy, leaving the NYPD with fewer than 30,000 officers by next year. Numbers the department has not seen since the 1990s. Even though tax revenue has outpaced projections, Mayor Adams says the city has to close a $7 billion budget gap in the next fiscal year. He blames these cuts on federal COVID aid ending and costs of the migrant crisis rising. The teachers union projects 43 percent of the school system will be hit with mid-year budget cuts. That's exacerbated by a record number of homeless students, many of whom are seeking asylum and learning English. This is going to become a really ugly public fight. Our schools dealing with the asylum seekers are under a tremendous amount of stress and pressure because they're not getting a lot of support and now they're going to get cuts on top of it. City Councilman Justin Brannon chairs the Council Finance Committee. He says there will soon be oversight hearings to evaluate the budget plan. I think some of these proposed cuts are really puzzling uh, and I think you know the onus now is on the council to put forward some alternative proposals. On top of all this, City Hall says agencies should prepare for two more funding cuts in the next six months. We need help and don't cutting everything off is going to be worse because we're not going to have nothing. But the mayor says on the bright side he's not raising taxes. In Astoria, Queens, Ali Bauman, CBS 2 News. Wow. <laughs> wow. I want you guys to understand how messed up this situation is, okay? I, I really want you to understand, okay? This is going to be an unmitigated disaster for New York, okay? If you thought New York City was bad, it's going to get worse. They're going to go the way of Chicago and San Francisco, right? That's exactly what's about to happen in New York City, okay? Because these illegals, right, who rejected, they rejected... Uh, the migrant facilities that taxpayers paid for, millions of dollars, right, facilities. They rejected them, right? These same illegals are the illegals that Eric Adams is now cutting funding across the board, right? So he's cutting sanitation as if New York City wasn't dirty enough, right? He's cutting uh, the police, he's defunding the police as if New York City wasn't dangerous enough. And he's cutting education as if these kids didn't get dumber because of the pandemic era policies that were pushed 
and supported by people like Eric Adams and Democrats, right? So again, he's cutting from vital sources, vital resources that people need, okay? Children need uh, to help the illegals who are so uppity, who are so ungrateful that they won't even stay at these shelters that we pay millions of dollars for, taxpayer money. You can't make this stuff up, right? You can't make this stuff up. Again, how do you think that this is going to end in the long run, right? How do you think it's going to end when you have all these illegal immigrant uh, kids that are going to these schools, you're defunding the school, so you have less money, right? It, it already probably was a struggle before. The kids are already dumber than they should be because of the pandemic. How do you think that's going to work out in the long run? How do you think it's going to work out in the long run defunding the police, right? We already know how it's worked out in some of these other cities, right? Like San Francisco and Chicago, right? Again, you think it's going to work out well here in New York City? I don't think so, especially with the influx of illegals, okay? Because again, you know, some of them are bringing crime, right? They're bringing some issues. They're bringing some problems. And the more of them that you have in the city and then you're defunding police, uh, again, New York City is about to become like a third world city. It's about to become like some city in Venezuela, Straight up. I mean, you already got the, the illegal selling box right on the street corners in Brooklyn. You already have it. So, again, New York City is on a one way trip to becoming a third world city. I'm telling you. Right. I'm telling you, this is not going to end well. It's just not. But, hey, this is what they get. Right. This is what they voted for. They voted to be a sanctuary city. They have laws in place that literally require them to do what they're doing, right? That they voted for, that people like Eric Adams supported. And again, it's just so funny how, again, th there were literally economic arguments, right? Where people would say, no, conservatives, you're wrong. Illegal immigrants are a net positive. If you don't understand, they're a net positive, okay? They're net positive, okay? Um, you're, you, you want a, a terrible economy. You want a worse economy by not allowing illegal immigrants into the country, okay? The illegal immigrants make the economy better. Um, I'm trying to see where is the empirical evidence for this, right? Where is the empirical evidence? Because what we're seeing in New York City, Chicago, and some of these other places, objectively speaking, the illegals are not making it better. Right? They're not making it better. They're sucking up resources, soaking them up, millions of dollars of resources to take care of these people. Now, again, once they get their paperwork, right, once they're allowed to work, now Biden has allowed some of them to work, but... Again, the big problem is that they're not really allowed to work, okay? So once they're actually allowed to work, yeah, business will benefit because they'll get cheap labor. But you know who's going to suffer? The American people are going to suffer, right? The people in that city are going to suffer, okay? Uh, and that's just the reality of the situation, okay? I don't think that this is going to be a good ending, okay? I really do believe that we are seeing the process of once great American cities become third world countries, right? That is literally what's happening before our eyes, okay? It's it's truly fascinating stuff. <laughs> but anyways, hey, Eric Adams, there's only so much he can do. He's stuck between a rock and a hard place. If he continues to call out the Biden administration to put Biden on the hot seat, uh, he risks uh, going to jail, right? <laughs> Being locked up because the feds have already raided him, you know, before. Who knows? They may escalate their investigation into him. And <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he keep talking like this if, you know, you don't see some charges levied against, um, you know, Eric Adams by the feds and the Democrats are going to go ahead and take this guy out because he's he's complaining too much. He's begging for too much money. And he, you know, he, he just got to deal with it like Brandon Johnson. Right? He's not he's not acting like Brandon Johnson enough out there in Chicago. So, hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.